Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name and address. Jason Sheffield, 168 Oak Street, Pine Valley. Good afternoon, Mr. Sheffield. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Sir? <laughs> Mr. Sheffield, have you ever been asked to testify before a court before? Could you please answer verbally, yes or no? <clears throat> uh, no. You seem a little bit nervous, are you? No, um, <clears throat> no, not too much. I kind of have that uh, under control. Good, because all we're trying to do here is get to the bottom of what happened on the set of The Cutting Edge on February 8th, 1996, the day Laurel Dillon was shot and killed. <laughs> Mr. Sheffield, what was your job title at WRCW on February 8, 1996? Intern. I was hired through Pine Valley University's work-study program. And the station manager, Liza Colby, she was your supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Sheffield, I hate to bring this up again, but you do seem a little nervous. Well, it's, it's like I told you, I've never testified in court before. Well, there's nothing to it. You just tell us the facts as you know them. Tell us the truth. Now, what kind of duties does an intern at WRCW perform exactly? Um, everything. Run errands, collate reports, host tours, fetch Handle coffee. props. Mainly the 38 special revolver that was used as, in an interview with John Doe, the illegal street dealer of guns. The same gun that shot Laurel Dillon eight days later. Yes. Um, you see, after that show, Miss Colby ordered me to put that gun and all the others in Mr. Martin's desk drawer, and uh, that's what I did. Now, did anybody see you do that? Yes, Janet Green. She was in the studio that day picking up her fan mail from her appearance on the cutting edge, and she saw me put the stuff in the drawer. Now, by stuff, you mean firearms? Yes. And that's where those firearms stayed until the day of the shooting, February 8th. I guess. I didn't keep checking on them or anything. Tell the court, did you see Janet Green at WRCW on February 8th, the day of the shooting? Yes. And where did you see her? At WRCW in Mr. Martin's office right before the show started. Was she alone? No. So Miss Colby ordered me to watch Mrs. Dillon's little kid, Amanda, and then Rudy, the stage manager, poked his head in and said that he needed me on the floor immediately, and that's when Miss Green came in. So, um, I mean, I swear I forgot about her being dangerous and everything, so I left her alone with the kid. So knowing everything that you knew about Janet Green, you left her alone with this minor child and those guns? Yes, I'm sorry. Look, but she is guilty, okay? She pulled the trigger. She's the one that's psycho. Objection, your own. She killed that kid's mom, so lock her up. Order. Mr. Sheffield, I'm completely up. Trevor? Listen, I just wanted to say I know how hard this is for you. And I admire your strength. I need to get some fresh air. Come on, Tim. Sorry about that. You heard? Yeah. We are two of Pine Valley's twin pariahs people whose jobs deal with very controversial issues. Yeah, well, there was a time when Trevor and I were like brothers. Yeah, but he's grieving right now. He, he lost somebody that he loves. Y you have to give him time. He'll forgive you. Mm. No, really, trust me. You're a very easy person to forgive. You're out of your tree if you think I won't talk. What, and defy AA? break those precious 12 commandments? I don't think so, Haley. It's your lifeline. You can't live without it. You murdered my aunt. Anonymity is everything in AA. You told me so yourself, didn't you? Unless people feel safe, the program's a bust. Then you tell the truth, Haley. If you tell, you break the code. And if you break the code, you can't stay sober. Mr. Sheffield, court's about to resume. Would you care to join us? 
have to be cross-examined by Janet Green. Court is in session. Mr. Sheffield, please we take the stand. Remember, you're still under oath. Ms. Green, do not waste the court's time with frivolous questions. Stick to the guidelines as instructed. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Hello, Jason. Hello. On February 8th, 1996, the day Laurel Dillon was killed, you were working as an intern on the set of The Cutting Edge. As part of your duties, did you procure a group of young thugs, uh, neo-Nazis, if you will, to stir up anti-homosexual feelings among the audience? Well, I wouldn't say to procure is the right word choice, but I happen to know some kids who have some pretty strong feelings about homosexuals, and um, they were invited to be part of the studio audience. For the purpose of stirring up trouble? Well, Miss Colby likes her action. So the answer is yes? Yes. When you and I were in Tad Martin's office, did you see me go anywhere near the desk or put my hands on the gun? No, you must have taken it after I left. Objection, Your Honor. Somebody took it. It wasn't me. Miss Green, I'm warning you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Please answer the question. Don't editorialize. Were you on the set when Laurel was killed? No, I wasn't there when you pulled the trigger. Objection again. I did not pull the trigger. Mr. Sheffield, the jury will decide who pulled the trigger. It wasn't me. Refrain from making judgments or I'll be forced to hold you in contempt. Mr. Sheffield, don't try my patience. Continue. If you weren't on that set when somebody pulled the trigger, where were you? I was in the video library upstairs. Someone needed a clip, and I was the only person that knew where to find it, and um, I, I, I didn't even know about the murder until after the show. Jason, tell the truth. I... Just tell the damn truth. Silence. Right Quiet now. in this court. Quiet in this court. Anyone unable to exhibit proper decorum in these chambers will be escorted out by the bailiff. Is that clear? I'm sorry. Ms. Green, please proceed and make it fast. Mr. Sheffield, are you telling this jury that you did not witness the shooting of Laurel Dillon? I was upstairs in the video library. Like I said, I fell asleep and I missed the excitement. So you brought your friends in, these neo-Nazis, to stir the audience into a frenzy, and then you went to the video library and you went to sleep. Television is a very stressful industry. Who are you covering for? Nobody. Who are you trying to protect? Objection. She's badgering the witness. Sustain. Miss Green, make your point and move on. My point is that somebody had enough hatred in their heart to aim the gun and pull the trigger, and I submit that this witness who knows who that person is. And that maybe he's even friends with that person. Do you have strong opinions about homosexuals, Mr. Sheffield? I have strong opinions about everything, yes. Do you hate them? I hate their lifestyle choice, not them. We all have strong opinions. Some of us hate gays. Some of us wish they would remain invisible and not press their agendas on us. And there are some who wish all gays were dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Sheffield? So maybe someone who felt a little insecure about their own masculinity went to the Tad Martin's office and they stumbled on the gun and they used it. Objection, speculation. Sustain. I'm doing the best job I can. This is my first case. I, I'm trying to do it right. Haley asked you to be honest. So what is the truth? Did someone on that set want all gay men dead? No. Has a gay man ever made a pass at you? No. Have you ever found yourself being attracted to someone who was gay? No. Is it all right to shoot someone if they're gay? No. So do you feel sympathy for the victim's family, her children, her husband? Yes, yes, I do. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. And would you still feel sympathetic if the victim had been Michael Delaney, a gay man? Or would you have felt vindicated because maybe he deserved it? Maybe he brought this on himself by pressing his agenda. 
Oh, wait a minute. Your brother's gay, isn't he? Isn't that right, Mr. Sheffield? Answer the question. Is your brother gay? He thinks he is. Well, I must be barking up the wrong tree because you two are very close, right? Yes. And I'm sure that you give your brother all the love and support that you can. It doesn't matter that he's gay, right? I mean, you were just doing your job, working up the hatred in the audience that day. It was nothing personal, right? No. In fact, since you're not a heterosexual... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Since you're not a homosexual, you must be very comforted by the fact that your brother has such a wonderful role model as Michael Delaney. In fact, you admire Michael Delaney, don't you? You like him. Michael Delaney is a credit to gay men everywhere. Delaney, it should have been you. You should be dead. I was aiming for you. Don't look at me like that. Yes, I got the gun out of Tad's desk, and yes, I pulled the trigger. But my aim was off. Oh, kind of like my life, huh, Kev? Except I hit the wrong person. It wasn't my fault, it was an accident. I'm not guilty, Haley. I mean, it's not like I planned to do it. I even tried not to do it. Like AA says, you gotta pick up the phone and make a call. Well, I picked up the phone, I made the call. Haley was too busy to give a damn. Thanks a lot! Mr. Sheffield? Of your own free will, are you confessing to the murder of Laurel Dillon? You're damn right. And I'm not finished either. You. Yes, you, Liza, and your cutting edge and your almighty ratings. Stir the pot, you said. Get out there and make them nice and angry. Use your rage to make it work. Well, I did. You want to take credits for ratings through the roof? Why don't you come up here and take credit for this, you ratings whore? Oh, well, that's just great. I've never seen you shy away from taking credit before! Miss Cole, hey, we heard on the police band that there were fireworks down here. Where do you, where do you want me to set up? Uh, no, just uh, go. Hey, uh, you want witnesses? No, and just get your cameras out of here or you're fired. Do you hear me? Don't swear, just go. You made me do it. All of you. I just was the one that picked up the gun and shot the wrong one. I gotta get out of here. Mr. Montgomery, as the state's attorney and in light of new evidence, what do you say? Your Honor, the state would like to drop all charges against Janet Green. Thank God. So ordered. The charges against Janet Green are hereby dropped. The jury is dismissed. Bailiff, escort the prisoner out. Court is adjourned. Fine, man. I've been calling after you for blocks. Why didn't you stop? Because I never do. Come on. No, you come on. What's one life up against a market share? Motherless children up against advertising sales. I helped Laurel Dillon be killed. But I won. I'm a success. We made a mistake. We did, not you by yourself my idea. So what? I didn't offer much in the way of resistance. Boy, when I want something, everybody folds, don't they? Oh, and I suppose you make the weather, you chart the current. Lightning doesn't strike without your permission, Jason right? Jason was mine. I just psyched him up for the kill. Because you were thinking about ratings, not bullets. There were, there were guns on the set. I should have just passed out the semi-automatic weapon. We screwed up. No! A screw up is a short show. An audio malfunction. A woman was killed. It was murder. And I was an accomplice. Look. I'm not about to tell you to lighten up. There is no upside to this. It doesn't... It doesn't get any worse. But you didn't get here by yourself. I was with you every step of the way. I really, uh... I really shouldn't have dragged you into it. I really shouldn't. I'm glad you did.
years. I have made you into some sort of an outcast. And you're happy to have me back. What are you, some sort of sadist? I believe the word is masochist, and it, it hasn't been all bad. Yeah, the same old Ted. You probably liked the tornado, too. It wasn't boring. You were blown off a bridge into the Sycamore River, and it was the highlight of your life. Beats a board meeting any day. Bet you like chicken pox, too. Got to stay home from school? called quarantine. You're experiencing some of it now. At least I'm not alone. Oh, yeah. Nothing like old friends. People who knew you when? Before I was considered frigid. Oh, you're not so cold. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Frosty, maybe. Frosty? I think maybe I started out frosty, but uh, now I'm, I'm just... What? Heartless? No. No, no, I have heart. It's just that nobody sees it. Not since you. I mean, really, since the last time... I have a great view from where I'm at. People look um, very small. And I can reach down and I can manipulate them. Like uh, Janet and Michael and Laurel. I mean, they didn't even know what hit them. You're omnipotent. Well, yeah, kind of. I think that... Uh, you're that way when you don't have any feelings. You can say anything or do anything. And it doesn't matter. Because you're not the one to lose. It's other people who lose. Like, uh, Amanda and Lily. I mean, they don't have a mother. And why? Because she wasn't important to me. They have no one to brush their hair at night or tuck them in bed or comfort them after a nightmare. There is a empty place where Laurel should be. I am the one who broke their heart. didn't cost me a thing. Come on. Come on. Take him to home. 